tremendous honor to be here. I want to thank my family for being here and supporting me. I want to thank my family at Heinen's for being here supporting me. And I want to thank Par Parker Hannafin for, uh, for inviting us here and being the um, forward-thinking uh, company that uh, you all are that embrace not only innovation in your own uh, motion technologies forefronts, but also forefronts of health and wellness and food. And, uh, you know, without further ado, we'll get right down to the nuts and bolts of how to eat yourself super. As, as Annette mentioned, um, I have been blessed with passion and purpose, holistic health and wellness from a young age. And it really started when I was a youngster growing up on a self-sustaining farm in rural Appalachia. I'm a fourth generation Appalachian root doctor and herbalist who went to medical school, right? And I've been educated through the conventional system to the hilt. Went to Ohio State Med School and uh, graduated from Ohio State in the Cleveland Clinic. I have finished my training in medicine at Case, all right here, right? But I always tell people that I'm a root doctor who went to medical school, right? And the, the root doctor in me is the healer, right? Our practice here in Northeastern Ohio um, is a thriving practice with thousands of patients. They come from all over the country to see us where we use food and herbs and get them off of their pharmaceuticals, get them off of their drugs. It's a very simple strategy. And uh, a couple years ago, uh, the, the, the magical connection between what I do and Heinen's was born through their typical ground up approach at creativity through one of their local wellness consultants, Carla Aya Felice, and she's right back here. She called me at my practice and said, hey, you want to do a talk about health at Heinen's? I said, that sounds great. Sure, I love Heinen's. And um, the reason I loved Heinen's then is because they supported local, organic, true healing, nuts and bolts healing through local food, right? And that was before I knew all the intricacies of what is actually done. Um, truly unsung heroes in food and food procurement and health food. And we're going to talk about some of the specifics, why. But then this magical partnership was born. How revolutionary a doctor in a grocery store, right? See, we have this shared vision that the grocery store is the doctor's office of the future. In fact, it is. We know that. And we welcome you all to, um, to listen, not only today, but to our consultants in stores uh, across northeastern Ohio. And we are a resource for you in health and wellness. Um, all righty, let's see here. So this is a really important gathering. Like, uh, like, like most Appalachian peoples, I'm um, of a mixed heritage, Scots-Irish, Anishinaabe, and Lithuanian, right? And that, I identify with every aspect of that traditional uh, being. And that traditional being um, enabled me to spend countless hours with my elders in the fields and the forests learning about nature and true healing capabilities and also from the earth. And that experience at a young age lit within me that passion and purpose to travel the world and learn from other elders. And, um, and the, the world over, no matter which tradition, which culture, there are several reverberant themes that you see in health and wellness and reverence and respect and connectivity. And my own ancestors, probably your all ancestors, and many of the cultures that I encountered across the world would always start important engagements off with a ceremony, right? And so I, I didn't even ask Don if I could have a bonfire here. <laughs> but what I did do is I took a picture of our ceremonial flame where we honor the four winds, the four peoples, the four directions, the cardinal directions, and the earth and the cosmos. And these things that unite us all, really, we're all brothers and sisters. And my ancestors have a very simple and eloquent philosophy love each other, help each other, take care of each other, and hold no grudges, be non judgmental. That's the hardest one, but we have to work at it, right? And we start this off by facing east. And the reason I wanted to do this here is because this is an important interaction. It isn't me teaching and you learning. It's teaching and learning both ways, right? Because just as I have information for you all, so too do you have for me. And this information and information exchange better enables me 
to help people, you know, um, both you and, and other individuals. And I like to start off with some wisdom. Uh, this is a classic, right? Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. These words were spoken some 2,400 years ago by Hippocrates of Kos. This man was, is hailed as the father of modern medicine by many. Yet, what do you think he would say nowadays if he saw the state of the medical establishment? Right? I can't speak for the man, but I'm sure with a statement like this, he would not be thrilled with the state of drug and surgical solutions. Now, it is unfortunate but true that interested business plays way too prominent a role in our standard of care medicine. The profiteering comes before patient health and wellness and healing. And that is a sad statement, but it is true. As Don says, Don Washkowitz, he said to me, and I like this analogy, I share it with people, he said, it's like a book was written about medicine, and the book is given to all the new doctors, but the book was written by the pharmaceutical industries. That's what's sad. So this is our offering to you, a book written by a medical doctor on food, the simple strategies to health and wellness, and how we reverse and prevent illness with food. We have a simple strategy that we've put together, both at the practice and at the grocery stores, the consultants at Heinen's, and, uh, and a lot of feedback from customers and patients. And this simple strategy, right, is that smart food is fabulous. It's a five-pronged approach, really, right? Eat superfoods, manage your fats, manage your sugars, and know your source and con conscious consumption. And these kind of go hand in hand, and we'll talk about each one of these as we go through the lecture. Here's what I want to tell you. Right? Disease literally need not exist. If it does exist, it's for one of these two reasons, either toxicity or trauma. There's two types of both. With regard to toxicity, there's environmental toxicity. We're exposed to things that our ancestors weren't exposed to. Plastics, PCBs, endocrine disruptors, xenoestrogens, larvicides, fungicides, pesticides, herbicides, all of these things interact in our bodies in complex, deleterious ways. In fact, there's a great study that just came out in the peer-reviewed literature talks about how pesticide exposure leads to an increased incidence of Alzheimer's, 40 to 80 percent risk increase in pesticide exposure. Right? It's sad, true, and it's an unfortunate reality that we can't live in a toxic-free world right now but we could approach a toxic-free us with some effort, regular cleansing. The other kind of toxicity is food toxicity. Too much sugar, too much fat, and these drive inflammation, which drives disease. So the solution for the toxicity end of this spectrum is regular detoxification strategies through food and healthy eating. My book is your guide for that, for both of those. And the other kind of cause of disease is trauma. There's the obvious kind of trauma, rushing here, rushing there, lack of present awareness and something happens. So be careful, right? <laughs> be mindful. As the elders say, present moment awareness mitigates myriad disease states, including anxiety and depression, right? This is, you know, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate reality that that, uh, you know, in the modern day, people's stress cascades and stress responses are, are really run awry because of, you know, the state of modern living. But there are solutions for that, too. And we'll talk about some of those as we go. Absolutely, though, make no mistake that stress is a killer. It is the leading reason why life expectancy in the U.S. relative to other high-income countries is going down. Life expectancy in the U.S. is going down. In fact, our children are being born with lower life expectancies because of this. Stress and diet. So slow down, be present, eliminate stress. These are some obvious kind of solutions. But the not so obvious component of trauma is our trauma of being removed from nature. Not really realized, but a huge and catastrophic 
happening in our, in our culture, right? So some concrete examples of this, right? Water, for example, water. I was reading something this morning about how leading medical experts are advising that we put statin drugs in the water supply. <laughs> right. What a horrible idea for a couple of reasons. A, they're already in there from the pollution, right? And B, it's just not the right solution. The data is clear on statin drugs. The benefit, if any, is minimal. The side effects and risks are great. The real solution is food. The statin drugs cause diabetes. It's absolutely no question why the pharmaceutical industries want more people on them, right? Now, in large part, majority of morbidity and common complaints, of fatigue and chronic muscle aches and pains and um, these types of things are really mitigated by adequate water consumption. What is adequate water consumption? Well, first of all, it's got to be pure water. And that's part of the problem. Because of who I am and how I was raised, I view water as very, very differently than most, right? Water is a living liquid crystal. It's the only substance in our realm of existence that exists in all three phases. Solid, right? Liquid and gaseous states. Nothing else around us does that. It is a moving crystal with information and energy and nutrition. I can't tell you how many patients say to me, oh, Dr. Todd, I can't drink water. I don't like it. Or even, I hate water. I say to them, you can't hate water. You are water. You're beings of water and light. Water and light and energy, right? But I understand where they come from on this. See, many of us have more sensitive alarms for noxious stimuli. Noxious stimuli meaning things that aren't good for us. And unfortunately but true, there are a lot of things that aren't good for us in our water now. Heavy metals. Fluoride, which is a caustic neurotoxin that's added to our water under the auspices of dental hygiene. It's complete BS. It's complete BS. It's almost as ludicrous as the fact that they're putting mercury fillings in people's mouths. You know, mercury comes to the dentist's office in a toxic waste container. It leaves the dentist's office in a toxic waste container. Does that make your head a toxic waste container when it's in there? It's really, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up, right? So there are these things, fluorine, chlorine, which is added, as it's, a, it's a disinfectant added that causes all these disinfection byproducts that are deleterious to our health. Now they're finding pharmaceutical residues in our water. Our water supply is adulterated. We need to connect one another and our children to our water. My children now, nine and six, have not drank tap water. They drink spring water. We go and get spring water once or twice a week, every week, and we always have. A couple generations now we've done that. And prior to that, the spring was in our yard, <laughs> just like it was for all of us. We would settle on water. We would drink copious amounts of water. So it's a really easy thing to do now. In my book, I have some resources for you. One is findaspring.com. Just type it in. They're all around here. We live on 20% of the world's fresh water. For those of you from this neck of the woods, you know, I mean, it's been raining for like a month straight, right? <laughs> My ancestors call them thunderbirds. They know when to come and they know when to go. Our plants need it. I don't know if we need it a whole lot more right now, though, huh? It's soggy out there. Um, but so if, that's, if it's impractical for you to get spring water weekly, at least try it a couple times. You know, the next, next uh, best thing is to purify your water. There's another great resource in the book. It's Environmental Working Group's uh, uh, water resource. You go to their website, you type in your zip code, and it tells you what's in your water and what you need to do to filter it out to have pure water. So my patients that say, 
well, I don't like water, I can't drink more water. I tell them, take the water challenge. That means drink spring water or purified water for a month, and then tell me how much you don't like water after that. 100% success rate. People love water, right? Um, now, the, uh, the next, real quick, how much water is enough? There's all these equations and different things out there. I tell people to drink enough water that you're peeing clear regularly throughout the day. That's it, right? And you'll see fatigue go away, constipation, nausea, all these different common chief complaints improve with proper hydration. And in particular, hydrate before you're eating and activity. Those are the two key times to hydrate. And then when you wake up, our bodies lose about a liter of water through insensible losses just at night while you're sleeping. First thing in the morning, I'll drink a liter of spring water. All right, so we're talking about this trauma of being removed from nature. We're not settling on springs any longer. Um, we really need to connect to our roots in health and health care and things like that. And th this is really what I call the traumas of being removed from nature. And we're going to give you a couple more examples. We talked about water. The next one is this, sunshine deficiency. It's a real simple thing. Why is the sun so crucial to us? Who could tell me? Like, vitamin D. Is vitamin D a vitamin? No, it's not. Who said that? Yes, what is it? All right, Chris. <laughs> yes, it is a hormone. Uh, the difference is a vitamin you get through your food, whereas a hormone you make inside of you from a precursor. What is the precursor for vitamin D? Cholesterol, which has been unnecessarily vilified, right? Cholesterol. Cholesterol, made in the liver, floats up to the skin in the form of 7-dehydrocholesterol, where it's then irradiated by UVB radiation, right? Being a fat-soluble hormone, it then goes back, is activated in the liver and kidneys to the active form of vitamin D. Now, people are so chronically deficient in vitamin D because we are lied to and taught to fear the sun, right? Oh, when you go outside, put a hat on. You know, put clothes on, put sunscreen on. You know, people who wear sunscreen have a higher incidence of skin cancer than people who don't. Why is that? I don't know. Poured over the data. Could be that people who use it have lighter skin tone in the first place. Could be the compounds in the sunscreen. Could be the false sense of security with sunscreen. Could be all of the above and then some. Probably the latter, right? Make no mistake, it's true. And the next part to that, right, is I believe, you know, it's, the human body doesn't do well with transitions, right? So it makes no sense to be inside Monday through Friday all day with a suit and tie on and then out in the yard with no shirt on all day Saturday because then you get fried, right? And that's when the problems happen. It's rapid traumas like that build up the aggregate. How beautiful is nature? Just a few minutes extra each each day of sun exposure, right? Now, I'm an advocate for sensible sun exposure, right? And the, uh, the, the, the bottom line here is that our ancestors spent a lot more time outside with a lot less clothes on, right? A lot less clothes on. And, and because we aren't doing the same thing, we have a serious nationwide vitamin D deficiency epidemic that is responsible for the gamut of morbidity and mortality. Look, with an optimized vitamin D level, there's a risk reduction of roughly greater than 70, it's 77% for cancers across the board, greater than 80% for breast cancer. Imagine that, eradicating breast cancer with vitamin D repletion. Greater, greater than 60% of diabetes type 1. This is the autoimmune type. So this is a correlate for all the other autoimmune diseases or loss of tolerance things like rheumatoid arthritis, 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 psoriasis, all this stuff. Greater than 50% multiple scler sclerosis. This is a huge thing, right? That and diet pop, right? 
aspartame, which is an artificial sweetener, is metabolized to formaldehyde in our bodies. Do not drink diet pop. It's absolutely horrible. Drink water. Drink matcha. Right, we'll talk about matcha in a little bit. Greater than 30% of heart attacks, the list goes on. <clears throat> right? So if there's one thing you take from this lecture, in addition to drink more water, eat more superfoods, connect to your roots, make sure you get your D level checked and optimized. The amounts you need to have an optimized D level, right? You spend 20 minutes in the sun, your body will make 20 to 30,000 IUs of vitamin D. Multiply it out the whole day, 750,000 to a million IUs your body makes. Multiply it out the week, millions. That's how much we're deficient. So these woefully inadequate, pathetic, conventional medical recommendations on vitamin D repletion are just ineffectual. We give millions of IUs of vitamin D, my practice, with excellent results. In fact, we're not the only ones. This therapy is done all over the world. In fact, even in pediatric populations in Australia, it's such a simple little thing, vitamin D. I advocate for a level of at least 60 nanograms per ml. And all this is in the book and our repletion program and whatnot. All right, so number two, we're dehydrated, right? We have a sunshine deficiency. We're also disconnected from our ancestral foods. The foods that came from the earth in a pure, pristine, unadulterated soil and way that are loaded with minerals and trace minerals and hormones and hormone precursors. We are deficient in all of that stuff because of the modern diet. Right? And those deficiencies drive all kinds of health issues through a couple of different mechanisms, one prominent one that I want to talk with you about today. How many of you all know somebody with a thyroid illness? Everybody should raise their hand. Some 76 million people in America have some kind of a thyroid illness. The reason is because of these trace mineral and mineral deficiencies. Right? But the solution in modern medicine is put them on a drug, a synthesized pharmaceutical. That isn't the right answer. I'm going to talk about what is. So thyroid is at the base of your neck comes from the word thyros. That's the Greek word for shield. Shield. It's your body's shield. It tells every cell in your body how quickly to consume oxygen in producing energy for you. Whatever that cell's function may be. Whether it's a, a hormone cell to produce hormones, an immune cell to drive immunity, a skin cell to drive immunity, you know, a brain cell to remember things all of the above. And the way it does that is through a hormone called T4, right? And the T4 hormone diffuses throughout the body, it's turned into T3 at the cellular level, and utilized. The thyroid produces that hormone, that T3, and T, that T4 hormone. Now, what T4 is, is tyrosine, which is an amino acid we get from our diet, with iodine attached to it. So it's iodinated tyrosine. Right? We're not getting the iodine we need in our food, period. We're just not getting the iodine. So the body doesn't have the raw material to make the hormone it needs. People present with cold hands and cold feet, constipation, mental fog, sluggishness, weight gain, trunkal obesity, bye-bye arm, all this stuff is thyroid thyroid. Picture it like this. You have a thermostat. You turn it up, it's your metabolism. Things speed up, you're happier, healthier, moving around. You, know, you turn it down, slow, cold, sluggish, backed up, hair falls out, bowel gets congested, fatigued, mental fog, it's weirded out. We need iodine, people. And everybody knows it, too, and that's what's sad. That's why they put, started putting iodine in salt. But iodized table salt is garbage. It's a third glass, a third sand, and a third 
industrially iodinated sodium chloride and its byproducts. The real solution is iodine in our food. Our ancestors, they had a dependence on sea vegetables. They traced the oceans. They ate sea vegetables. They had trace minerals that are concentrated in the ocean, including iodine. Even DIT, which is diiodinated tyrosine, that's connected to form a T4, or a thyroid hormone. All that stuff was in our food. We don't get it. So the solution is food. Now, how many of you remember this? This is an engineering group, so I'm sure I'll see a lot. Yeah. No tests, though, all right? But look, here's the periodic chart. There's iodine, which we need. And as you recall, from the top down, as you go down, these, these ions get bigger, right? So look, not only are we eating less iodine than our ancestors, but we're also inundated with goitrogenic antagonists like fluorine in our water supply, chlorine in our water supply, bromine, which is a preservative in breads and things like that. Now, these things look like iodine, but they don't function like it in the body. We need more iodine and less goitrogenic antagonists. The simple solution, daily iodine supplementation and lots of superfoods, root veggies, seaweed, and things that have the iodine you need. When this thing, when, when, when the thyroid is slow, we're predisposed to illnesses, infections, cancers, all kinds of things. Weight gain, which drives all kinds of illness. And inflammation. How many of you all heard of inflammation? Yeah? Is this good or bad? Who do you think this is good? Raise your hand. Anybody think it's good? Raise your hand. Ah. I heard it. Who said that? All right. Yeah. It's good and bad. We need inflammation. When you get infected by something, your body needs to get inflamed to get rid of it. Trip and skin your elbow or your knee, you know, twist an ankle, body becomes inflamed to heal it. Body becomes inflamed to heal it. Right? The problem is with chronic inflammation. And the reason we're chronically inflamed is because of our food. One simple little thing that I'll tell you about when we get to that section of the presentation. But look, this isn't new information. This, this is a cover of Time magazine. I think 2004 or 5? Yeah. Uh, the surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases, and what you could do to fight it. The secret killer. Now, the problem isn't inflammation. It's chronic inflammation. We are perpetually inflamed because of our diet. We'll talk about how to remediate that. Now, look, it drives everything. Diabetes, type 2, cancers, arterial disease, Alzheimer's, pulmonary disease, osteoarthritis, autoimmune diseases like diabetes 1, rheumatoid arthritis, so on and so forth, neurological disease, all of them. And I can't talk about all these today, especially because I want to focus on food. <laughs> but I'll just briefly mention our nation's number one cause of morbidity and mortality, arterial disease, and then diabetes, quickly. So here's arterial disease. We all start out with a clean set of pipes. Over time, they get gunked up like this, right? What is this? Who knows? Two words. Fat toxicity. That's it. That's all it is. Body takes in so much fat, doesn't know what to do with it, stores it in the vascular lining, in a haphazard process called atherosclerosis, which over time drives inflammation, drives disease, drives occlusion, right? Eventually a, pla a plaque could form on this, uh, a clot, and uh, preclude any blood flow distally. So if it happens in the heart, it's a heart attack. <coughs> happens in the, the brain, it's a stroke happens in the foot, it's claudication. But the thing is, it doesn't, it doesn't have to happen in a big vessel. In fact, it's happening in our microcirculation all the time. Steady cognitive decline, right? Lack of circulatory efficacy. It's a sad thing. Fat toxicity. And just as too much fat is fat toxicity, so too is too much sugar, sugar toxicity. Well, our body 
and they interact together and drive inflammation and disease. But our bodies, they don't necessarily stuff all the sugar in the linings of the vessels. What they do with the sugars is they attach it to all the proteins and things like that in our blood, making it sticky. Makes it sticky. This haphazard process called glycation end product drives cancer, inflammation, and all kinds of things. All right, enough about all the problems. Here's the solution, right? Here's the solution, superfoods, right? And you can find them at Heinen's. You can also find them in the woods around here. And you can find them grown on locally uh, appropriate family-owned beyond organic farms. And we've sourced those for you. And you can get them at our stores. So superfoods are plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense, health-empowering food. Now, I just want you to look at this calorie sparse, nutrient dense. Meditate on that just for a second. Because this is the exact opposite of the standard American diet, here and after referred to as the SAD. Right? The SAD, SAD diet, is calorie dense, nutrient sparse. And that's the problem. Too much sugar, too much fat. The body does not become satiated from calories. It becomes satiated from nutrients. Your body eats because it needs nutrients. It seeks it out in nature. But if there's no food in the food that you're eating, your body keeps eating until it gets what it needs. This is why our ancestors the world over, how many of you remember your elders or somebody saying, have some greens before your dinner, bitter greens first. Small side salads before your dinner. You, you eat like half of what you would. It's the body is the nutrients. This is why, all right, now be honest. How many of you all have eaten a cheese pizza, a whole cheese pizza? Raise your hand, come on. All right, yeah, look at that, right? Yeah, so, all right, yeah. So the, the average cheese pizza weighs like three pounds, right? It weighs like three pounds. How many of you have eaten three pounds of broccoli? You couldn't, right? <laughs> Your body had shut, shut you down. And that's what's important about this, right? right? Calorie sparse, nutrient dense. The broccoli's got the nutrients. It's, your body becomes satiated. Your body becomes satiated. And that's why these superfoods are health empowering. So food is fabulous. This is our message to you today. We wanted to bring you some samples, some recipes from my book, and also some recipes that we have in the stores, in the, in the uh, salads we love sections, and at the salad bar, things like that, also prepared foods and things to make it easier for you all in feeding your family. People always say to me, Dr. Todd, how do your kids eat so healthily? They eat vegetables. They eat what we eat. And it's really easy. And that's what we want to show you through this revolutionary partnership between a holistic medical doctor and a grocery store that it's easy and delicious to eat healthfully, both for you and your family. We want you to start with superfoods and integrate plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense, greens, rainbow veggies and fruits, balanced proteins, omega-3 fats, and functional foods in your daily plate. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Manage your fats. We want you to focus on omega-3 and minimize all else. Here's why. Chronic inflammation, okay? You've all heard essential fatty acids, right? EFA, EFA, 369, 369. Well, it's wrong. <laughs> They're essential because your body needs to get them from your food. But your body can make the nines from the threes and the sixes. It's like math. Three plus six is nine. They're uh, hydrocarbon moieties. Now, but they're both essential, threes and the sixes. They have drastically different functions in the body. The threes are anti-inflammatory. Whereas the sixes are pro-inflammatory. The threes are anti-inflammatory via EPA and DHA, promote eye and brain health, and are anti-inflammatory for a number of different reasons. Whereas the sixes are turned into arachidonic acid, which drives all of the inflammatory mediators in our body. We need both. We need them in balance. Our ancestors ate them on a one-to-one -one ratio. We eat them on a one-to-thirty ratio now threes to sixes. This is why people are perpetually pro-inflamed.
Here's why, though. Threes are rich in seeds and greens. Seeds and greens. Where sixes are rich in caryopses, which are the seed of cereal grains. Right? Corn, rice, wheat, soy, and barley sustain 95% of the diet of 95% of the world's population. Not only are we eating those, but we feed them to animals and then eat them. Too much omega-6 in the diet. Even the animals are perpetually pro-inflamed. This is why the low-fat plant-based diet is a gold standard diet in health. And why we advocate for focusing on omega-3 fats and minimizing all else. But you get the rest. You've got to work hard to get more and avoid the sixes. And manage your sugars. Go low glycemic while minimizing simple sugars, and in particular, fructose. Fructose is fine in fruit. It's fruit sugar. It's rapidly absorbed by your body. Small amounts. It's nature's energy jolt, right? It is not good for us in high concentrations. So I don't care how sweet the corn farmer is on TV that talks about it comes from corn. How could high fructose corn syrup be bad? It's bad because it's highly industrially purified and extracted and concentrated. And fructose bypasses key regulatory checkpoints in our body, channel stuffs. When we don't need it. Drives liver toxicity and inflammation and uric acid, which drives high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. Nasty stuff. And know your source and conscious consumption are, are key things here that. You want to know where your food comes from. You want to know where your food comes from. Believe me, you want to know. And here's a tool that I developed to help you make those healthier choices. And you'll see this throughout the grocery store and on model products and whatnot. The base, leafy greens, of course. And we'll walk up this, and the book walks you up every step of this. Greens, the base of the food pyramid, right? The base of the superfoods pyramid. And here's why. They're the most nutritive food in existence. Our ancestors ate six to seven to eight pounds a day of these things in season, right? Calorie for calorie, ounce for ounce, they have the most nutrients. They're anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. In fact, the the chlorophyll pigments, the green pigments, are anti-inflammatory. Not only that, they're a bioavailable source of magnesium. Heme, the molecule in our blood that carries iron, essentially biochemically identical to chlorophyll. Only the chlorophyll has a magnesium. Keep hearing all over the place about how important magnesium is. It's a vasodilator, important for our physiology for a number of way, reasons. We get it from our greens. We're greens deficient. They're also alkalinizing. The process of life is acidifying. Our bodies need to work to stay alkaline. With acidity spawns disease, cancers, inflammation. And greens are deeply detoxifying. They have sulfur-rich compounds that facilitate detoxification of our liver, which does facilitates detoxification of our whole body, right? Support your liver. It's called a liver for a reason, <laughs> you know? So this here is, who knows what this is right here? Anybody? All right, yeah. This was actually Leah's Mother's Day salad prior to picking. The neighbors were like, oh, the Pessics are out eating the lawn again. <laughs> They do it now, too, though, so, and that's really cool to see. Um, don't eat your lawn if you spray toxic poison on it, right? Don't spray toxic poison on your lawn. There's a reason Fido can't go on it, right? There's a reason it's against the law in Canada to spray poison on your lawn. It's really bad for you. It's okay if the flowers and the dandelions blow around. It's, that's all right. They're beautiful, and you could eat them. I always thought it odd. You know, spray the lawn, kill the dandelions, and then go to the grocery store to buy them. That's good business for Heinen's, but, you know, I, 
<laughs> it's not good for the planet. We'd be perfectly happy if you ate your lawn. <laughs> Make it fun. You know, the kids love it. Cutting board salads. You know, look, at this thing was gone in like 30 seconds in my house. Little smileys. The, the girls love them. The kids love them. You know, um, friends come over, sleepovers, and hang out. Everybody's always eating at our house. People, the, even the kids, they know and they love good food when you do it right. Rainbow veggies, uh, rainbow fruits and veggies plus veggies. Point is, you want two times the veggies of the fruits, right? And I don't expect you to eat a whole bushel like this. You could chop it all up and make like Carolina slaws and chutneys and salsas and salads and throw it together at dinner parties. Invite people over. Eventually, they'll be doing the same. It becomes really fun. Right? The reason you want rainbow veggies is because there's a diversity of plant pigments in them. You need them all. Right? Doesn't matter if you know carotenoids, zeoxanthins, lutein's, um, you know, anthocyanidins. You, that's job security for chemists. You just know Roy G. Biv, the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and green is set apart for a reason. In there, <laughs> eat your greens. The base of the superfoods pyramid, right? Balanced proteins. We have a craze with protein in this culture because of the meat and dairy industries, constant lobbying. People eat way too much protein. It's hard on the kidneys, it's hard on the liver, drives uric acid production, drives inflammation, um, <coughs> drives high blood pressure, drives cardiovascular disease, high concentrations of fat. You know, a lot of times if the, the animal isn't healthfully, you know, uh, from the start, their omega-6, you know, preponderance. There's all kinds of stuff, right? Our ancestors subsisted on a diet that was 80% carbohydrates and about 20% protein and fats. It's about 80-10-10 or 80-15 protein and 5 fat. That's about where we were at, and we always were. That's the diet and health. I get this question all the time. Dr. Todd, my neighbor eats scrambled eggs and bacon every morning for breakfast and pastrami sandwiches for lunch and steak at night. He's on this new diet and he's losing weight. Is that good? What do you think is what I say? Absolutely not. For a lot of different reasons. Shuts down our endothelial progenitor cells that repair vascular lining. Our brains need carbohydrates for healthy cognition. Those patients, they hit a wall and they suffer dearly for those kind of diets. This is our ancestral diet. This is the way we eat. There are balanced proteins all around us. You know, Popeye ate spinach, not cans of tuna fish. I'm not, I'm, not fan, I'm not a fan of canned anything, really. But if you're in a pinch, you know, fresh. But the point is that greens is that vegetables, amino acids are the building blocks of life. Those proteins are in everything. You get them in your food, OK? And balanced proteins, in particular, are legumes. Soak and sprout your legumes. Um, uh, this is alkalinizing proteins. They're available as bioavailable building blocks for, for completely healthful, um, uh, sustained energy. How many of y'all know what this is up here? Quinoa. Quinoa. Yeah. When I used to, I first started giving this presentation, nobody knew what that was. Now everybody knows. That's great. It's a, a miracle food. It's actually the seed of Chenopodium or Goosefoot. So, Omega-3 fats, here are my three choices. I like chia, flax, and walnuts. Make sure you get like 3.5 gram, grams of uh, omega-3 fats a day, plus a little extra DHA, right, for these essential conversions. Look, the walnuts look like little brains, don't they? How many all know what my eldest, Kaya, is holding here? What is it? Not an avocado. Black walnut. Exactly. Native, right? We used to eat tons of chestnuts and walnuts and black walnuts and tree nuts. Very good for you. Functional foods, the tippity top of the pyramid. You know, even if you're eating perfectly from the pyramid, in this day and age, you fall short here and there. Our soil, our, our soil is depleted. We need to supplement a little bit, too key functional foods, and even key supplements from foods. I elaborate on that in Chapter 10 in the book. And we'll be doing programming this fall um, at uh, 
at the, the local Heinen's. Um, so keep your eye out for that on, on essential supplements and um, food and whatnot. So, you know, functional foods are, uh, you know, add some purpose to your plate in addition to, to nutrient and sustenance. This here is traditionally fermented sauerkraut. It's a living food. Bioavailable B vitamins, nutritional yeasts, micronutrient macrocosms, health empowering, rejuvenate. How many of y'all have made this or you remember your... Yeah, see, awesome. There's, you know, see a couple here and there. It's really easy. The recipe's in my book. The whole second half of the book is on setting up your superfoods kitchen and recipes for all the stuff that we had today. Um, this is a seaweed salad. Salicornia and seaweed, sea asparagus, and a bunch of different uh, seaweeds, bioavailable iodine, bioavailable iodine, thyroid support. And if you don't have time to make your kraut, go to Heinen's and buy it. Here's our sauerkraut solution. It's called wild brine. It's great. It's in the deli section. When I'm in a pinch, I, have, I buy this. I eat sauerkraut every day. It's great. It's raw. It's living. How many of y'all know what this is? I heard the right answer. Oh my gosh. It's cacao. That's a chocolate tree. That's awesome. See, guys, the ladies had it right. Chocolate is a superfood. Chocolate is a superfood. Chocolate has magnesium, which is vasodilator, right? It's got uh, theobromine, which is a vasodilator also, but it keeps coming back for more, right? It's got uh, serotonin and its precursors our happiness neurotransmitter. And it's got phenylethylamine and anandamide, which are neurotransmitters responsible for love. So you got vasodilation, happiness, and love. That's a party, right? <laughs> yeah. And you can put some raw chocolate. There's raw chocolate bars. There's raw chocolate nibs. There's raw chocolate seeds. You could eat it all, you know? Um, with your uh, regular fermented beverage, you might want to have cheesy kale chips, <laughs> raw chocolate, sprouted flax crackers, little brains, you know, <laughs> some tomatoes. We have all of this stuff. Check it out. It's great. It's fun. It's an adventure in taste. Oh, Leah's birthday cake. She's got fruit and, of course, some chocolate on there. And the kids love them, too, and the beverages. We have a new uh, Dr. Todd's juice line. The recipes are in the book, available at select local Heinen's. Um, the kids love these. How do you get them to eat all the celery and the kale? Well, they love juice. You know, They love it. You put some ginger in there, spice it up. They absolutely love it. Um, and then the superstars in the pyramid, one in particular is the matcha. Now, this is a super superfood. It's incredibly rich in epigallocatechin gallate, which is one of the most powerful catechin antioxidants known to man, myriad health benefits, but it's also a meditative beverage. The ancient tea masters would tell you, drink your tea reverently and slowly as if it's the axis the entire earth revolves around. It promotes alpha wave production in the brain because of its theanine content, and so it leaves people happy and at ease. So I always make this a prerequisite to doing a lecture anywhere. Because then people leave happy, right, from the matcha. All right. So we talked superfoods on our strategy. Manage fats throughout. I'm just going to recap. I want you to minimize fats and oils. More omega-3, less 6. Plant and nut fats can be good, especially the 3s. Saturated fats. Think MCT, not LCT. The medium chain triglycerides in tree nuts, in chocolate, in coconut. This is good for us. The long chain fatty, uh, uh, long chain uh, triglycerides are the animal-based fats that gunk up vessels. So you want the medium chain. And if you're including animal products in your diet, a you have to start with a healthy animal, and b you want to minimize portion and frequency. You don't. It's not a 48 ounce strip steak with a little side salad. You know, that's, that's a wrong thing. You gotta flip that at a minimum. Try meatless Mondays. Try, you know, 
sprouted bean Thursdays. You know? <laughs> How many of you all like the qu sprouted quinoa tacos? I mean, that's, that was great, weren't it? All right, yeah, yeah. Eliminate trans fats, they are not food. They're not food. They're plastic, okay? You want to manage sugars? Minimize your sugars first. Avoid simple sugars and processed carbohydrates. Aim for low glycemic foods. And we want to include anti-glycating foods like blueberries and yukon in your diet. Minimize cereal grains. Not necessarily saying exclude them. But think of them and be cognizant of the three to six ratio and eliminate genetically modified organisms from your diet. They drive inflammation, they're nasty. Know your source. Local organic seasonal celebrations of food. I've traveled the world over and visited farms across you know, every continent in the planet. And the one that I am literally the most impressed with is right here in northeastern Ohio. This is Andy Miller's organic farm. Right? His farm, we get a lot of our tomatoes and peppers from him. He doesn't even use machinery. He's an Amish guy. Truly magical farm. Amazing. We have all of those kind of stories. We source those things. Conscious consumption. We want you to carefully evaluate what you purchase and support and consume. Think beyond organic and beyond fair trade. Right? Think beyond organic, beyond fair trade. Avoid pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides, synthetic growth aids, genetically modified foods, preservatives, dyes, high fructose corn syrup, MSG, artificial sweeteners. The list goes on, right? We want you to critically read and evaluate labels and think, minimize fats and oils, more three, less six. Minimize saturated fats, MCTs over LCTs, no trans fat. Minimize sugar, whole grains over refined carbs, minimize sodium. It gets so complicated, doesn't it? We want mineral sea salt, not iodized table salt. Mineralized sea salt is good for you. Celtic gray, Redmond real, Himalayan pink. Those are the kind of salts you should be using. I know it seems overwhelming. Look at all that. That's a mouthful, isn't it? How do you do it? Well, you use tools and ask questions, right? You got tools. You got Superfoods Pyramid. You got the Dirty Dozen, Clean 15, Chopper's Guide to Pesticides. At Heinen's, our Dirty Dozen isn't as dirty as everybody else's. And our Clean 15 is even cleaner because of the careful attention to our sourcing that we do. It's authentic. The stories are there. Just look for them. And you'll learn and understand that uh, the true lengths that uh, Heinen's actually goes through um, in procuring these foods. And by the way, I just, on this slide, wanted to uh, you know, let you all know that Tom and Jeff Heinen actually came to this talk. And they're here. That's just a testament of how important this, uh, this, this new collaborative potential between Heinen's and Parker Hannafin is, and, and also the fact that we are committed to enabling people be a little bit healthier one bite at a time. And uh, I think uh, you, know, you could see it throughout their stores and in their presence today. Here's our, our merchandising in some of the stores. You'll see the pyramid on select foods and you know, all this kind of great superfood. So stop by your local wellness center, connect with a wellness consultant. They're enabled to tell you about all this kind of stuff. You know, try it. Bring it home. Let your kids eat kale chips instead of potato chips in their lunch. They're going to love them. And lastly, you know, it's much more than food. This all really, uh, you know, uh, is enabled by this, my traditional upbringing and herbalism and the secrets of long life research the world over. It, it is much more than food. I alluded to this in the book. There's a whole write-up on my blog. Um, you could look this reference up. There's uh, an hour-long presentation on my blog, which I'll give you. I'd invite you all to check it out and come visit us, um, either at the stores or at my practice. I have, uh, uh, you know, some health coaches here, um, Sarah and Renata in the back, to answer any questions you might have about becoming a patient. I'm also here with the other half of my Great Lakes Health family, the other founding physician, Ron Castleberry. He's right up here in the front, and so we're uh, we're here to help you in any way we can. And lastly, some financial disclosures. I am the co-founding holistic physician of Great Lakes Health Institute, right up the road. We have a satellite facility now on the west side. We're 
taking over the old preventive medicine group now, Jim Fracklin's old practice, um, a founder of Dr. Todd's Superfoods, this matcha, and we have other superfoods in that line. I'm the chief medical officer for Heinen's, with a tenured health sciences professor at CSU, um, right here in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm also joined by a colleague from there, a uh, professor, one of the most, Dr. Califatis, one of the most brilliant alternative cancer researchers in the world. And uh, we're all here to, to work together on this really awesome solution for, for you all and serve as a model in uh, really redefining health and healthcare. So many thanks and be well. Here's my website, eatyourselfsuper.com. Um, books available, we'll do a signing. And uh, uh, you could also get it at your local Heinen's. It's available on Amazon and uh, Kindle and Barnes & Noble and Nook and also iBooks as well if you don't pick it up today or if you're not here and watching this elsewhere. So uh, many thanks and be well.